In the last episode, we got player physics and player movement working. So today, I want to go over player respawn and obstacles. All right, so let's go over to the property window. So if you go down to this little Python symbol, you will get a bunch of components and properties. For my little project, what I want to do is if the player falls into the water and touches the dirt on the bottom, they will die and respawn. So let's go to the property tab and add a new game property. The object that you have selected will end up getting this property. So you can see this little piece here has the property and if I select anything else, it does not. So let's select the dirt here and we'll add the property drown. <laughs> like so. We also don't have to set anything else on it. We have some Boolean, integer, float, string, and timer variables here. We're just using this as a basically a collision marker. If you are used to Unity, this would be the same as the tag system. We have our property drown. In fact, I'm just going to control C. So we're going to copy that and go to our player and we're going to add a new script. And I'm going to call this player health. So we got player health. This will be for later implementation, but we will make it so the player will just instantly die if they go into the water. So what we'll do is go collision and we'll just leave it on once, say player. Don't forget, since this is a new script, to apply to selected. So we'll go to collision and what we want to collide with, we'll set property and we want the property of drown. So when the player collides with the property drown, set location, position, and we want to select position global. So select the player. So now we need to set the player's position. Shift S and then cursor to selected. Then we're going to add a new empty. So this plane axis empty right here. And if you press F2, you can rename this. So we're going to call this spawn point. Now, back in our logic nodes, let's search get location. And we'll set this to global as well. Position global. And then select the empty. So we called that spawn point. So you can just search it up and then connect the world position into the value. If we press play and we walk over to the water and fall in, our character will set itself back to our original spot. So you can do this for checkpoints and spawn points, all sorts of stuff. You can randomize it, select random locations and all that. But for now, this will do. So we'll recap. Currently we have WASD, we have a jump, and we have a death and respawn like so. To demonstrate some physics, let's click on the lily pad, create a new node tree, call this lily pad. This will be a good demonstration of physics. So basically, I'm going to make it so when the player jumps onto the lily pad, it will hold the player after a timer is done, then it will make it so the lily pad is no longer collidable, the player will fall through. Apply to selected, so we'll select the lily pad and apply it to that. Let's select the player, and in the properties, add a new game property, and let's call this player. So with the lily pad selected, do another collision. So we'll do a collision check and we'll say self and the property is going to be player. Make sure it's spelled properly because I'm terrible at spelling. So we got player. So when we collide with the player, then we're going to set a timer like so. So when colliding, timer. And we want this timer to go for, let's say, two seconds for now. And then when the time has elapsed, We'll go physics, set physics of self, and leave active unchecked, and this will set the physics of this lily pad to none. So if we press play and we jump on the lily pad, we collide with the lily pad, a timer should go, and then we fall through the lily pad. So something that we're going to do is make it a little bit more visual now. The player falls through it, but let's make a little animation. If you go to the data pack properties, go to shape key, add a new shape key, this will be our base. And then we click plus again. Now we can add a key. If I select the lily pad and press tab, it'll bring us into edit mode where we can adjust some of these. And then grab all of these vertices along the edge. And I just want to drag these up like so. If you tab out of edit mode, you'll see that it just goes right back to the original. And we can adjust this like this. We can adjust the position by adjusting the slider. Now let's add a new key. If I go into tab, I am just going to move it down. So for animations, we would usually use the action editor, but for shape keys, it only uses the dope sheet. So we're just going to select the lily pad and add keyframes like so. Then we're going to go to frame 24, so 24 frames a second. And we will just go to, let's go 0.9. So it's just below the water, add a keyframe, and then 
all the way under for a little bit of extra because I kind of want it to go bounce a little bit because right now it just kind of folds in. <laughs> Let's add one more key. We can get a little bit of bounce here. We'll do frame seven. So it'll be pretty fast. It's a little bit slow. So let's just do 12 frames a second. And then what we want to do is basically reset this. When the timer has elapsed, then the player will fall through, which will start another timer, like so. And in one second, it'll take one second for them to come back up, then set physics, and then active. So now when we press play and we go to the lily pad, we can fall through it. We come back, we'll give it a second, then jump back on it, and then we fall through it again. That way, the player, when they fall through, can basically have a reset for the lily pads. That'll be all the logic for the lily pads. I do want to do the animation. Let's duplicate. Go to the layer that we duplicated earlier and duplicate it again. And I'm just going to call this logic bricks this time. In fact, let's just go back and do logic nodes, keep things clean. In the logic bricks tab, we can go over and select logic brick editor. And this will bring us to the old fashioned logic brick editor from eons ago. Clicking on the first lily pad, we'll do collision and we'll do collision with player and then action. And the reason I'm doing this is to, because the animations are kind of broken with the logic nodes sometimes. And I just find that I get better results this way got this lily pad which we can select is going to be action six and we'll do frames so this is going to be the initial collision so we'll go zero and then 12 because the first 12 frames is just a little bounce animation like so if i press play and then jump on this lily pad a little bounce animation plays so we're going to select the lily pad and we're going to add a game property so this game property is going to be called stand so if the player is standing or can stand, and we'll set this to Boolean. So we want a true or false answer basically out of that. We'll go back to the logic nodes and say set property like so. So after the timer has elapsed, we want to set the property of this lily pad. So we'll select self and the property stand and then set the Boolean to true or false. So it'll be true when we start, so you'll be able to stand on it by default. And then when this timer has elapsed, it will say false. So if we go back to logic bricks, we'll say when the property, so I just press P on the keyboard to give a property. So when the property stand is equal to false, then we'll do a new action. And we'll say action six to the slowly pad. And our frames are 20 to 32. So 20 and 32. So now we have an actual working animation. Then I can select all these other lily pads with the one that is currently selected. I will press F3 and I'm going to do copy logic bricks and I'm going to do this again. So F3 copy and I want to copy the property stand. So basically copying this will give all these objects the same stand property like so so if I go to the lily pad and jump on it the animation plays properly but I think we'll have an issue so yeah you'll see the animation doesn't play for the other lily pad so what we'll have to do is click this one or actually this one is seven this is really tough <laughs> there we go and now all of those actions work properly. So I'm just going to go through, select this one. We'll do four for this one. Keep testing them, making sure they all work. There we go. Now all of the lily pads work. So just remember, if you're using shape keys, that you will have to assign each uh, animation of the shape key specifically for the object that it goes for. It's not like a regular animation where one animation will work for multiple characters if they have the same rig. So just something to keep in mind when you're working on your game. So let's just do a little animation. So we'll go property because it does go back to normal. So we'll do another property. We'll say stand if stand is equal to true. And we're just going to play the original bounce animation. So I need to do this for all of them now. I will speed through this because you, I'm sure you get the gist now. 
All right. So now when I jump on a lily pad, falls through. And they should start popping up again. Uh, eventually. <laughs> If you want to analyze your properties while the game is running, you can click this little eye icon. You can see it in the top left, and it is at true right now. should be a timer, and it should set it back to true again, which it's not. So let's go over to logic nodes, make sure that we have that implemented properly. We do not, so select duplicate. And when our timer over here is finished, set it to true again. So this is the reset. We can go back to our logic bricks. And when we go over and jump on the lily pad, like so, falls through, and then it goes back to normal. Let's set the reset timer to be a little bit longer. So we'll do three seconds. <sighs> All right, so that's the lily pads done. <laughs> so just a quick note, the reason I have to use both the logic nodes and the logic bricks together. So with logic nodes, it is one script that's being applied to multiple objects. So they all activate at the same time. Where logic bricks are individual logic that are running on separate objects. Each object has its own logic that is running. This means that for a lot of stuff, logic nodes, you'll get better performance because you'll have less logic running in the scene. 